As a person who makes top 10 lists on the internet, many numbers are important to me. Like 1986, because the Mets won the World Series that year. Or 40, because that's the speed limit. I don't want to get a ticket for driving too fast. But the number that's probably most important is 10. So when something involving the number 10 happens to a top 10 list, what do we do? Party! Or at least acknowledge it in some way. And with the upload of my last top 10 list, I now have 10 official top 10 lists. So what should I do? Maybe some commemorative list. And to see all these top 10 lists I speak about, just look at the top 10 list playlist on my channel. It's been suggested to me to do a top 10 top 10 list of mine, but I'm gonna do something a little different. What's the biggest honor of a top 10 list? Well, being number one, of course, and I'm gonna take the most positive aspect of each of my top 10 lists, the number one selection, and pit them against each other. And if you're watching this in the future after I've uploaded many more top 10 lists and this playlist has gotten way too convoluted for its own good, the top 10 lists, aka my first 10 top 10 lists, that I'm taking the number one selections from are Top 10 Songs About Precipitation Top 10 Songs Famous Because of the Internet Top 10 Songs About Plastic The All New Top 10 Characters I'd Like to See in Skullgirls 4 DLC Top 10 Songs About Dreams Top 10 Original DCAU Characters Top 10 Brand Slogans Top 10 Characters I'd Like to See for DLC in Injustice Gods Among Us Top 10 Underappreciated Product Mascots and Top 10 Characters with the Power of Hair Manipulation. Disclaimer, there's another Skullgirls Top 10 list on my channel but it got replaced by the aforementioned all new one so pretend that first one doesn't exist for the duration of this video. So there will be a battle between whatever was in the number one spot of these lists. We'll have songs going against cartoons, going against mascots, going against slogans, go against... You get the point. It's gonna be a crazy list. And if you haven't seen all the lists I mentioned, then be prepared for some unexpected choices. Also, I will not be judging these selections based on the same credentials as the list they appeared on, such as a certain type of power. It's a direct comparison of each selection to one another. So what is the best of the best that I've covered? This is the top 10, top 10 list stoppers. No, that doesn't sound right. Okay, I've dragged this intro on long enough. This is the top 10 number ones on my top 10 lists. Number 10 is Gundam Style from that internet top 10 list. Of all the number ones on my list made so far, this is the one I feel shouldn't have been number one. It was 2012 when I made that list, and Gundam Style was big, but what's done is done. So anyway, this fad has been covered to death, and no one has spoken about it since 2012 ended, so I'll keep this one brief. I enjoyed the music video the first time I saw it, and that was only because I saw Deadpool's version first. Also, I liked it when South Park had the joke of many of the characters dressing as Psy for Halloween. Don't know if I would have even noticed the tune if it wasn't for the music video. And I never really understood the hype of the dance, but that might just be me. In the end, many of us are tired of it, and we all know it's been more overdone than that roast you forgot was in the oven. My roast! <laughs> I will never forget about you again. Number 9 is Regina from Skullgirls. I like her design, she seems like she'd be a fun character playing a video game, but the problem is... All she is is a concept. She's just words on the internet right now. Everything else on this list exists in some form of media outside of an idea and some pictures. I can't really describe her outside of speculation in a paragraph found on the internet. Let's see how popular she is with the fan base. Here's the DLC vote. Where is she? Oh, there she is at the bottom. Okay, maybe she'd bear the second time. What? Even if more characters are put into Skullgirls after the planned ones, I doubt Regina will make it in based on how unpopular she was in the DLC vote. I will never see her come into existence. Thank you, person who drew these pictures on the internet. I know I'm not alone in the Regina fan base. Okay, hey, let's be happy. Number 8 is Barbie Girl by Aqua. This song goes over the troubles of being a Barbie girl, like being asked to go for a ride with Ken and partying, and being in plastic. Actually, that's fantastic. In fact, this entire song is peppy and happy. How can such an upbeat song make so many people angry? Maybe it's how it sounds. Maybe it's the lyrics. Maybe it's just the preference of people. All I can say is the angriest of the people were the people at Mattel, the creators of Barbie. Because they sued Aqua for tarnishing the image of Barbie with the success of this song. And here's where this song gained some respect points, because not only did Aqua win the lawsuit because the song was considered parody, but years later, Mattel used the tune of the song in one of their own Barbie commercials. This was never really the peak of musical greatness, but in reality, did anybody ever take this seriously? Come on, look at Ken. Number 7 is Ni Chang, the white-haired witch from the Forbidden Kingdom. She's not the main villain in the movie, she's more a henchwoman, but frankly, she's the coolest villain in the entire movie. She's an expert in martial arts and skilled using the bow and arrow. She even managed to injure Jackie Chan's character in this movie. Now, I know he was playing the drunken master, but that's still a master, and that's still a character played by Jackie Chan. 
Sure, she may have not been able to injure him in real life, it was a real fight. If Jackie Chan's a character in a kung fu movie, that automatically makes that character awesome. And if you can hurt him, that makes you awesome. However, her one negative trait is in the heat of the moment, she doesn't think. But really, who does? She should have taken the time to consider if one of her main abilities is grabbing onto things with her hair and hair is easily cut. In a life or death situation, it was not the best idea to grab onto somebody who's holding a knife that doesn't like her very much and thus led to her downfall. Number six is the superhero Black Canary. Of course, her only superpower is to scream very loudly, otherwise she's just good at martial arts, which is a power people can have in real life. It's not really a power, it's more a skill. That's right, kitties. You can be just like Black Canary, minus the scream. When you think about it, Black Canary and Ni Chang are pretty similar. They're both skilled fighters with one supernatural signature ability. Ni Chang the hair and Black Canary the scream. However, Black Canary does get the advantage here because her signature ability cannot be foiled by someone who has a pair of scissors. I was also very disappointed in her lack of appearances in any DCAU cartoons because that's where I saw all my DC Comics superheroes. Seriously, she had like three episodes where she spoke. She's also a successful member of the crime-fighting gang, the Birds of Prey. And really, she's the only one that's actually named after a bird in that gang. And last I checked, the Canary is not a Bird of Prey. Number five is the slogan, Got Milk. This is a very important question to me because when I'm on a weekly grocery run, I want to know, do I have milk at home? I know I have lots of cereal that needs milk and I don't want to go out at 7 in the morning one day just to get a carton of milk. And if we look at the campaign as a whole, it was quite significant because it got a lot of people, especially children, to start drinking milk. Come on guys, Taylor Swift drinks milk, you can drink milk. Wolverine drinks milk, you can drink milk. And you want to know who else drinks milk besides this fuzzy cat? Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I hope this convinced you, because I'm not going through every Got Milk ad ever created. Number four is Pepsi Man. Sometimes in life, you just have to admire what is awesome, and they should just make a show around this guy, because he doesn't even have a backstory. Sure, it might only last one episode, and I'll be the only person that watches it, but I just praised Got Milk for advertising healthy milk to children. Now I'm praising soda being advertised. If the Pepsi logo is replaced on his chest with the Got Milk logo and his powers involve milk instead of Pepsi, I'd still love him. You know, he's also a positive influence to children, minus the Pepsi. He runs everywhere, and he looks like he's in shape. Pepsi isn't even using him right now. Just sell him to some canned vegetable juice company so he can keep his aluminum skin, and there you go. He uses his powers for spreading health. Number three is It's Raining Men by the Weather Girls. Now, the first part about what makes this song so awesome is it's written by the late Paul Jabara and Paul Schaefer. I just found it a little surprising that Paul Schaefer wrote It's Raining Men just because I didn't expect him to have written that song. If you don't know who Paul Schaefer is, he's basically David Letterman's sidekick on The Late Show with David Letterman. And I've only seen him in that role all my life, so I didn't expect him to be part of this dance song. And if you don't know anything about The Late Show, um, he was Hermes in Disney's Hercules. And if you don't know what that is, uh... The second reason I like this song is it's absolutely ridiculous. What does it even mean? It's a precipitation of males. It's a song about men falling from the sky. And that's it. Don't look for some hidden meaning. Everybody just danced to it back in the 80s. And it's like the catchiest dance tune ever so I can see why it was so popular. Jerry Holloway even revived it a little in the early 2000s when she did her own cover. And if you don't know who that is, she's a Spice Girl. Wait a minute, this song has been placed higher than developed characters, interesting villains, and advertising campaigns that get us all to drink healthy. Damn, never underestimate the power of a good dance beat. Number two is Harley Quinn because she can entertain anybody. If you're a kid, you might like her goofy slapstick and her overall wacky personality. And if you're an adult, you'd find the whole complexity of her character very interesting because it's unexpected from such an upbeat personality. And you'd probably still like some of her humor. She's in an abusive relationship and she doesn't really know why. It's something you wouldn't expect from a kid's cartoon. Something you wouldn't expect from modern day melodramas. But let's also look at the happier side of things. I can't go over all of her backstory, but basically she's been called complex, funny, entertaining, adorable, and if you play in Justice Gods Among Us, a pain to use. So, I know you've all seen my top 10 list, right? So therefore you should know who number one is because there's only one option left. Number one is Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics. Why did I choose this as number one? It's the most entertaining thing to me. Not saying I don't like entertaining movies, Pepsi Man, and TV characters, but in a way, this kind of had everything, except maybe the Pepsi Man, and I'll try to prove it. Of course I like the tune and the lyrics, but let's look at the music video, because that's where I really want to analyze things. So, they start off in a boardroom, showing that Sweet Dreams are apparently made of the earth, and the guy not singing is watching their own music video, 
All right, seems pretty normal. And then, oh, okay, they're in the field playing what looks like cellos, blindfolded, and cow. And then her eyes are blue. And oh, okay, they're back in the boat. Wait a minute, is that a cow? Yeah, it's a cow. Oh, look at that, they're back in the field. I hope that cow has joined them. They said the gun style music video was random. And eh, there's probably some artistic meaning that I'm not getting. Oh, okay, they're on a canoe or a gondola or something. And I'm just gonna jump to the end, so spoiler alert. Uh, the lead singer's in bed, apparently about to go to sleep, and right next to her, the Eurythmic Sweet Dreams single. I feel that didn't explain anything at all. So here's why I choose Sweet Dreams as my number one. Of all the choices, I felt a song was the most universal option. I feel we can all listen to this song and find something enjoyable, whether it's the tune, the music video, or some artistic meaning beyond my knowledge. Not everyone out there will understand why Pepsi Man is awesome, grabbing things with hair is useful, or why two words make me consider drinking milk. So in reality, it's all my opinion, and let's just enjoy the song. So thank you all for watching, I hope you've enjoyed all my lists so far, and there are plenty more to come. See you all next time!